So in order to live your best life despite having MS, I need you to exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now that's easier said than done. My name's Aaron Boster, I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio, and in this video, I'm gonna help you decode exercise so that you can be successful. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today's video is the second in a series that I'm making on exercise and multiple sclerosis. The first video was on exercise selection, helping guide you with which exercises are gonna help you be the most successful. If you missed that video, no big deal. I'll throw a card up here so you can check it out. The focus of today's video is on exercise programming, kind of helping you think long-term about the big picture of how to be successful with exercise. So get out your pen and paper and let's jump in. Number one, I need you to exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now, I crafted that sentence very carefully. When you do something as part of your lifestyle, you are not rewarded when you do it and you are not punished when you don't do it. Now, for most red-blooded Americans, we think back to the glory days of high school when we were a high school athlete. And when you participate in high school or collegiate sports, if you skip practice, you get in trouble, you're punished. And if you win a game, everyone cheers and claps, you're rewarded. And unfortunately, we enter into adulthood with that concept of exercise, which is not gonna work for us as adults with busy lives and families and jobs and multiple sclerosis. I need you to consider doing something as part of your lifestyle. I'll give you an example. I have a lifestyle of showering. Every morning I take a shower. I don't talk about it. I don't tweet out, oh, had a great shower. I just do it. And if for some reason I wasn't able to shower in the morning, that's not a big deal. I just take a shower at night. It's just part of my lifestyle. I need you to cultivate exercise in that fashion. What I mean by that is if you planned to exercise on Monday, and life got in the way, I don't want you to beat yourself up over that and say, okay, I'm a failure. Not a big deal, just exercise on Tuesday. Number two is presenteeism. I want you to show up. If we have set out a plan that you're gonna try to exercise two to three times a week and you can put on the Lululemon and you can put on the cute sneakers and you walk out of your door, I'm gonna give you full credit. Even if all you did was walk to the mailbox and back, I'm gonna check that off as presenteeism. I am more interested in getting you in the habit of trying to make an effort at exercising than I am that you crush it with each individual exercise workout. We're looking for presenteeism. If you can get in the adult habit of exercising as part of your lifestyle, that mentality is gonna help us be much more successful moving forward. Number three has to do with how hard should we push it. And we can't use the high school mentality, which is typically something to the effect of, if I can run one mile today, well then I can run two miles tomorrow. As an adult with a life and a family and a job and multiple sclerosis, that's sometimes a setup for failure. Here's the key trick. Use the next day as your metric for if you overdid it with yesterday's workout. So if you are working out and things are going awesome and you can do all the things and you're having the time of your life and the next day you spend the day in bed, that was too much. I need you to be able to exercise on Monday and have a normal Tuesday. So whatever you did on Monday, if it was five minutes or only six minutes and that's allowing you to have a normal Tuesday, then we're on the right track. Now, if we carry this further, let's pretend that you can do five minutes with no repercussions. I want you to grind five minutes. And then after you've become very comfortable with the lifestyle of doing something for just five minutes, maybe one workout you'll try doing it for six minutes. Now I didn't say 15 or 30, I said six. I want you to very, very slowly, incrementally increase your volume. A lot slower than you might expect Number four is keeping in mind the goals of exercise in the setting of MS. There are four areas of focus. The first is balance. Balance is super important in MS and you can make your balance better through exercise. Number two is core strength. I need you to have a strong core, strong abdominal muscles, strong back muscles, strong hip and butt muscles. These are the key muscles that are gonna help keep you standing and help you stand back up if you were to tumble. 
I'm much more concerned about core strength than I am about having big guns or anything like that. Number three is flexibility. This is extremely valuable in the setting of MS and it can help decrease falls and minimize spasticity and a bunch of other really good things. And number four is cardiovascular endurance. Now, as I've shared before, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have one form of exercise that covers all four. So as you're planning out programming, make sure that you can identify today's exercise is really gonna work on this and this. And then I need to keep in mind that I gotta work on that other stuff in some other fashion. Those four things are important to keep top of mind. Real quick before we go on, do me a solid favor. If you find some value in this video, kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It's completely free and it teaches the YouTube algorithm that you like the content and helps push it out so more families impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. Some people listening right now might be thinking, Aaron, it's a little bit overwhelming. I'm not sure how to get started. And there's no shame in that game. Let me give you a pro tip. Reach out to your MS neurologist and ask for a referral for neurophysical therapy. A neurophysical therapist looks like a normal human, but they're not. They're kind of a wizard. They are experienced with aspects of MS like motor fatigue, heat sensitivity, um, unsteadiness of gait, all the things. And a neurophysical therapist is an awesome resource to help you improve gait mechanics, decrease falls, and to develop a home wellness program. And so if you are just starting off on your exercise adventure, or if you're stymied in trying to bust through a barrier, reach out to neurophysical therapy and allow them to help you navigate. This video is part of a series I'm making on exercise. And the next video in the series is gonna focus on medicines and assist devices to help you be more successful with exercise. If you would like to help this channel grow, the biggest thing you could do is to watch another video. So click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, my name's Aaron Boster, saying be safe and take care.